Before we get, begin, I'd like you all to close your eyes for a minute. I am watching. <laughs> this darkness that you see right now, or at least I think you see right now, is my reality. I wake up in the morning, find my outfits, do my makeup, at least on days where I don't feel that lazy. But I am blind. And usually, oh, by the way, you can open your eyes, but I think you already opened them. Anyways, I can't tell. Um, when people usually hear that I'm blind, they have two kinds of reactions. The first reaction is, oh my god, you're such an inspiration. How do you manage to get out of bed every morning? If I was you, I wouldn't be able to do that. And before I move on with anything else, let me clarify one thing. I'm not here to inspire you because I'm not your inspiration. I'm just here to tell you the story of a girl who has learned to overcome the barriers put forward by society because they continue deceiving themselves by propagating stereotypes of what a person with disability should be like. I'm here to tell you the story in hopes that you can break these stereotypes, that you can decode these deceptions, and when you move on in your lives, become policy makers, become change makers, ensure that you create a better society which is fully inclusive for all. But let's move on to the second kind of people. And these are the ones who are more interesting than the previous kind. <laughs> these people have one line. Oh my god, she is blind. Let's keep her locked in her house. This might be contagious. Let's stay away from her. Or at the very least, let's try to find a cure for her. Because we are so great. Science has progressed so much. She is so broken that she needs to be fixed. And the only way we can do that is by fixing her eyesight, because she cannot live without that. And I come from a culture which is very helpful. I come from a society where people like to know what is going on with everyone else in their society, like to go to their houses, find what they're cooking for dinner, like to eat that, like to know what, how their children are performing in school even before the result comes out. And so a lot of people had a lot of suggestions. Maybe you should take her to this cleric, or you should take her to that cleric. They'll give her herbal medicines. And I heard of this person who went there last night, and they could see when they woke up in their morning. Or maybe you should recite five verses of Quran every day, and you'll be able to see. Um, I did learn Quran, but not because uh, that would help me see. And I do recite it, but I still can't see. So I think these are the kind of helpful suggestions that we need to stop giving. Because when we don't realize that people with disabilities are regular members of our society, just like everyone else, we have children who have no self-worth. And it's something very easily said, no self-worth, but it's very hard to understand. And it's very hard to comprehend where these children come from. And let me tell you the story of one such girl. The girl was only three years old. And the first words that she remembers hearing are, ye anti kuch nahi kar sakti. This blind girl cannot achieve anything in her life. And the person who said these words was none other than her own father. And this is my story. I was that girl. Because of this, I learned to hate the word andhi. I learned to separate myself, Khansa, from the blind girl. And never realized that the blind girl was Khansa. 
and Hansa was the blind girl. When children in my school would wonder what was wrong with me, would wonder whether it was, I was Andi or not, I would take offense. I wouldn't want to be called the blind girl because it was bad to be called the blind girl. And that's really sad because as you can see, I'm still blind and that didn't change. So growing up with these perceptions around me, shaping my own perception of who I was as a person was not helpful to say the least. But I was very lucky because I had a mother who believed in me. I had a mother who told society that I don't care if my daughter is blind, I will make her what she wants to be and I will give her the life that she deserves. And so my mother embarked on this perilous journey, which was filled with my temper tantrums and me whining about not getting more candy or not getting another doll. And also people telling her that her blind daughter wouldn't be able to do anything, so I feel bad for her, mostly because she had to endure me for like 19 years. Um, but she taught me that it was okay for me to be blind. And it wasn't just something that happened through one conversation. And it wasn't just something that happened over a cup of tea. It took years and years for me to accept that I was blind, to embrace that I was blind. Because while growing up, I wasn't just known as being Andhi, I was also known as being the girl with a broken family whose mom was divorced. Being divorced is a huge stigma where I come from. And although my mom not only made the best of her circumstances and raised my brother and I, who is also blind, to embrace our disabilities, to overcome them, and to realize that we wouldn't be the same people without our disabilities. I'm sure she had to go through a lot. And that is because society deceives itself. How does society deceive itself? It deceives itself by believing that people with disabilities cannot do anything, or that they must be treated differently. I, luckily, had a very different experience growing up in my family. I remember when I was little, my grandfather, who would never treat me as if I was blind. I remember he would take us to the coca near our home, the little shop near our home, park his car, give me some money, and tell me to get off and find my way and buy whatever I wanted to buy. Um, I would be very happy because I'd get money to buy sweets. And I was a child, so I wouldn't realize that there was something wrong with bumping into people while walking to the little shop. I wouldn't realize that other kids did not trip over steps. I wouldn't realize that people looked at me weirdly, or that people looked at him weirdly, because how insensitive that he's letting his blind granddaughter go like that without holding anyone's hand. But he would let me go, and he would tell me to go and buy my candy. And my grandfather taught me how to fly without my wings being clipped. He taught me that it was OK to fall, to trip, to not know my steps. But he taught me that all I needed to do was to keep walking that path. And that whenever I would trip, he would be there to catch me along with my family. And I'm sure there have been multiple occasions when you guys have experienced the same. When you got an A minus instead of an A, and you thought that was the end of your life. I think that too. But I feel that the most important thing for us to realize is that the day we let ourselves stop, the day we tell ourselves, I cannot do any more, or I cannot do it, is the day that we actually cannot do it. And I know it's easier said than done. And I know that it looks really hard to overcome the barriers in our path. But when you don't realize that those barriers even exist, 
or when you realize that it is what it is and you've got to make the best of it, you learn to overcome it. I remember winters in our house were very cozy times. I remember in evenings, we would all sit around the heater, cuddle up under one blanket, as desi households are often apt to do. And my grandmother would start knitting sweaters for everyone. And I remember I was very fascinated by it. And I remember telling her, Nani, I want to learn how to knit too. And my grandmother didn't say, Beta, you can't see. I don't know how you will learn. She gave me two knitting needles and a ball of wool and said, this is how you do it. Start, make whatever you can. I tried, it didn't work. I tried again, it didn't work again. I tried again and I knitted a small muffler. And it was very rough around the edges. And sometimes I even missed. So like some places were like with weird holes. But it was the fir first time I made a muffler by myself. And those evenings with my grandmother made me realize that we can be the best support system for each other. Because we can not only help each other overcome what others deem to be barriers, but we can also help each other and pick each other up when we feel that we are falling. I remember when I would miss a hole and I would get frustrated, my grandmother would just tell me to stop, to pause, to reflect, and do it all over again. And now that I think back on these small knitting lessons that we used to have, it gives me more encouragement to continue with larger problems in front of me, or the larger hurdles in front of me. Because I know that I persevered once, and that I can persevere again. Because I remember my mother's cooking lessons, where when I started cooking, relatives would come to our house and say, don't let her near the stove. She will burn her hand. Uh, admittedly, I did burn my hand, and it hurt. But that didn't make me stop from cooking. And that didn't let my mother stop me from cooking. I remember she would tell me new recipes and wouldn't even come with me to the kitchen. And she would just tell me to make what I wanted. Bless him, my poor brother ate whatever I made. Further showing that sometimes you just have to deceive your family members and be nice to them even when they don't deserve it. But moral of the story, I continued cooking and I do it today and I like to think that I'm a good cook. At least I like to think so, maybe I'm not. And uh, you just have to eat my food to know that. But these things, these little stories that I'm telling you right now, have helped me become the person that I am. And it's not just about the positives. I've had many negative experiences in my life as well. And those experiences existed because people continued in persisting, in believing these stereotypes that were present within the society. Let me tell you what we can do as individuals to break these stereotypes. Because a lot of times we see problems and then we say, these problems are too big for us to solve. We can't do anything about it because we need nice politicians. But what we do need is more empathetic individuals. Yes, we need nice politicians. I, I'm the first to admit that. But we need empathetic individuals. And here are three things that you can do to make the lives of people with disabilities who live around you easier. Thing number one that you can do, and that's something you've been taught ever since you can remember. Never judge a book by its cover. Sounds cliched. But when people look at me, they look at me a certain way and expect certain things from me. And sometimes they won't let me participate in activities that I want to participate in. Or when I'll apply for student internships, they will reject me just because they think I cannot do something. Which is not true because I found my own ways to do something. 
I found my own ways to apply mascara, although like I still create blobs everywhere on my face. I hope you can't see any right now, but I just find my way to do it. A lot of people say I wouldn't be able to do it if I was you, but I can guarantee you probably would be able to do it if you were me. All you would need is some experience, some encouragement, and a belief in yourself that you can do it. Because when people judge you according to what you look like, it doesn't have nice consequences. And I'll tell you a little story. A lot of people often tell me, you don't look blind. Um, and I remember walking in my school, and I don't normally walk with someone. I walk alone, obviously. And I remember I was going to the washroom because I was in a little bit of a hurry. And the art teacher had scattered some paintings on the floor. I remember stepping over her paintings, accidentally, of course. And I remember her shouting after me, thank you, blindness, for ruining my paintings. And I remember saying, you're welcome. And after I turned the corner, I heard someone telling her, miss, she's actually blind. And I remember that our teacher saying, she is not, she doesn't look blind. And I remember going out again and telling her that I am, in fact, blind, and that she can ask anyone that I am blind. Um, so what I want to tell you today is that these perceptions that we have of people, when we look at them for the first time, should not define how we interact with them. When you meet a disabled person, ask them what they can and cannot do. Don't offer your help needlessly. I remember when I'm walking down the streets, people go and grab my arm and force me to a certain direction when that's not where I want to go. So if you meet people with disabilities and you want to help them, ask them if they need it. And trust me, they can judge for themselves whether they need it or not. And the last thing I want to leave you guys with is that learn to become allies. What do allies do? Allies assist each other in everything small and big. Admittedly, there are always going to be disagreements. Don't expect yourself to know all about disability and blind people just because you met me today. Because all blind people are not like me. Some are super awesome. Some are even better than me. Um, and when you meet these people, let them tell their own stories. Because everyone has a story to tell. I am disabled not because I am blind, although that doesn't help, but because the society around me is not built in an inclusive manner. Learn to implement core design in whatever you build, in whatever you enact. Because if you do this, you can make a truly inclusive society. Because disability is a part of diversity, no matter whether you like it or not. It is as much a part of diversity as is your skin color or ethnicity. So learn to embrace it as such. Thank you very much.